teach you a little bit about feelings and how they actually work in your body. So think of this, your brain on feelings. Um, I'm going to use a hand model, basically, of your brain to show you what happens inside in different parts of your brain and how it all works. So if you take your hand, fold over your thumb, and clasp it over. Picture this hand right here as your brain, right here. This is the forehead of your brain right there, right? And down here is the stem of your brain. And inside, right here in the center part of your brain, this part of the brain is called the limbic system. This is where your feelings live. If you've ever seen the movie Inside Out um, in Control Center, that's basically the limbic system, which is kind of neat the way they show that. Um, and then wrapped over your emotion part of your brain is called your prefrontal cortex, right in the front. This part of your brain is actually part of decision making. It's really the master regulator of your brain. This is the part of your brain that helps calm the emotion system. And it's kind of cool because you can see how it hugs the emotion system. This part of your brain needs to work to help calm that limbic system. And here's something really interesting. At the very center of your brain, there's a part of your brain called the amygdala, and it's honestly about the size of your thumbnail, about the size of an almond, and it is responsible for something really important. It's responsible for fight, flight, or freeze. This reaction has been in the human body forever, since caveman time, and we can even see it in action in animals, and it's the part of your brain responsible for keeping you safe. So whenever the amygdala senses danger, in some way, whether it's real or imagined, it sends signals all over your body and brain, and it triggers some physiological changes in your body. And you probably notice this. Um, when you get scared suddenly, or you feel surprised by something, your body instantly goes into this fight, flight, or freeze response. And this is what it might look like. So the fight response is pretty self-explanatory. If a threat is coming at you, you are going to do something physical to defend yourself, whether that's hitting or kicking or punching light is the opposite. If you feel like you're in danger, you want to get out of there. You want to avoid the situation altogether and you run. The freeze response is exactly what it is. It's freezing. You stay still. I always think about it and go out in the morning and sometimes like there's a bunny rabbit in the yard and it catches my eyes and I catch its eyes and it freezes. It's kind of like if I don't move, you can't see me. Um, so that is freeze in action. And I know too, I have frozen as well. Someone surprises me and I, I don't even move, I get stuck. Um, so these three reactions in our body are part of keeping us safe. Now, as I said before, your brain doesn't necessarily know the difference between a real threat or a pretend or imaginary threat. So if we start having thoughts about situations that are creating anxiety in us, we might actually be triggering our amygdala to go through this cascade of events inside our body to prepare us for fight, fly, or freeze. So what are some of the things that happen in our body when we trigger this fight, flight, or freeze response? Um, you may notice when you have really large emotions, your heart starts beating harder and faster. Um, you might notice your breathing changes. It can get more shallow or might get more deep. You might notice your muscles tense up and get tight, whether that's your hands, your shoulders, your legs. You might notice your thoughts change too. Your thoughts might go blank like in the freeze response. They might get angrier, they might get faster. Um, you also might notice that your stomach cannot feel very good. Your digestive system actually shuts down when fight, flight, or freeze um, is occurring in your body. You don't need to digest anything. Your body's trying to get itself ready to, to fight something or run away from something. So all that energy is spent going to your muscles um, and not thinking about digesting food. So that's why sometimes you might feel like you have butterflies in your stomach or kind of feel sick to your stomach or even nauseous. So if ever the fight, flight, or freeze response goes off for you, whether it's because you're walking down the street and all of a sudden a dog barking charges out and triggers that response, or maybe you're having a test and you're afraid you're not gonna do well, you can do things to help your body. There are a lot of tools to help your body calm down when you've experienced fight, flight, or freeze. Um, that's why we talk about filling our toolbox with deep breathing or grounding activities, um, eye messages, um, all those kinds of activities help basically take you out of your emotion center of your brain and bring you into the self-regulation part of your brain. And that's why it's important to understand that hand model because a lot of the tools that we use kind of help take all the attention and calm this part of the brain down and activate this part of your brain so you can better regulate. I hope that helped.
Take care. Thanks for listening. Bye. Thank you.